Hello. I'll be playing this video Giant Red Cloud War. Was in a panic. While I make this tattoo he didn't trust the white army soldiers. No one did. But he also didn't expect this. Can start off. His people, around 600 of them, well, we need were camped near a small stream in southeastern Colorado territory. They had tried to Mortar. signal to the U.S. Army that they were not hostile by reporting to Fort and Lyon, the closest fort in their area, toothbrush. as instructed. Doesn't matter. But not long after they arrived, yeah, the these. fort's commander ordered them to leave. He's that one. He's he said they would be safe here, along the shape. banks of this stream, 35 miles L away. Shape. Black Kettle had been told that He's as long as he flew a white flag the... and an American flag above his lodge, no harm would come to his Brushes people. Off. But now, 700 American soldiers rushed into his camp. Need, uh, the majority of the warriors were away hunting. The people fighter. who remained were mostly the elderly and the women and children. How to make fire with this, Black uh, Kettle gestured wildly at the flags above his lodge, trying to make the soldiers foil. understand. Need this. They didn't candle, get it, if you want or they it. didn't care. You don't need it. You they charged into his camp and began killing indiscriminately. The Cheyennes scattered in all directions, fleeing for their lives. You don't need it. Many rushed to the banks of the frozen stream this one, called Sand Creek, this one. whose name would be used to mark the event for all, all time. I gotta do is they made a final stand, but the soldiers it. just kept coming. Just gotta make an L shape. From Black Barrel Media, this is season four of the Legends of the Old West podcast. I'm your host, Chris Wimmer. And this is the first episode of a five-part series on Red Cloud's Bend War. Forward. This week, One, Red Cloud one, rises from an outsider with an alcoholic father to war chief of the Oglala, though not without experiencing tragedy along the way. White civilization begins to destroy the Lakota way of life, and Red Cloud aligns with another respected war chief, Sitting Bull, to advocate all-out war. Let it cool down. Other chiefs fear the destructive power of the vast American army. But then a massacre in Colorado Territory happens, and off. everything changes. We're proud oh, to partner with the Cowboy the Lifestyle Network. Like this. You can now find links to our show on their website, this. CowboyLifestyleNetwork.com, and their social this media channels. Go CLN on Facebook, Cowboy Lifestyle cool on down. Twitter, and Cowboy Lifestyle Network on Instagram. Cowboy Lifestyle Network is a one-stop shop for rodeo news, and stories about fashion, art, music, Native American culture, and all things Western. This is sit right on top. And now, here's episode one, The Road to Sand Creek. Right here. Just need to go up a little bit. That way, sit up a little bit. It's By the 1500s, right the people of the seven council fires so had migrated on north on and settled in the forests of present-day right. northern Minnesota. Do it like that. They routinely they bludgeoned like their this. neighbors to the east, the Algonquin. But they, they had more pins. trouble with another set of neighbors, the Chippewa. Doesn't matter. Just and it was the Chippewa who began calling these new arrivals this one the a Sioux. Too. A word sometimes translated as little snakes, or sometimes referring to a description of a snake. Before just... long... All the tribes in the area began seeing new types of people, white people, one. who wore strange clothes and spoke strange languages. They were traders and trappers from France. Like to the French, these tribes were equally strange. They existed in a suspended state of Stone Age technology. They used tools made from stone or animal bones. They had no artistic traditions beyond painting their bodies. They didn't weave baskets or make yeah, yeah. pottery or farm the land. They killed what they could with arrows and lances and scrounged plants from the earth. They had no concept of gunpowder and had never heard the explosion of a cannon. They moved okay. around entirely on foot. Razor, they had never seen a get, horse. Get the from, they used dogs as pack razor, animals to help transport from goods from one place to I another. Do this this, this would all ones. change with the arrival of English colonists far to the east multiple, and Spanish conquistadors blades, far to the south. The Algonquin the tribes were the first one, neighbors big, of the Sioux to acquire the gun through trades with the English. Do By the time the Algonquin began using guns to fight back against the Sioux in the late this 1600s, the pyramids at Giza and the Colosseum in Rome like were already ancient. Just pops out. The Great Wall of China had been complete for decades and had been started yourself. 300 years ago. 
Put your foot on top of it. Already written. Every word he was slam it down. Skip and he had now been down. dead longer well, than he was alive. Pop out. Vivaldi, but Bach, and Handel would soon like establish this. themselves as masters of music we now call classical. Put it up. And the Sioux were just so learning about out. weapons beyond the bow and arrow. The Algonquin and the Chippewa began to push the Sioux relentlessly south and west out of the okay, forests and onto myself. the grass prairies of southwestern Minnesota. The people of the seven council this fires stuff had reached a breaking point. The seven tribes had to make out. a decision. If you're in jail Would they remain or in this new land home if you don't or chart a course farther west on the their own? Need, this how, this how at least three this tribes decided to continue to west, them. one of which was the Lakota. The Sioux Nation was forever divided into the Western Sioux and the Eastern Sioux. As the Western faction moved toward the Dakotas, See, they it. divided Spill themselves into up. seven bands, in keeping with the mystical power of the number seven. The These right bands here. would soon become legends on the high plains. They were the Oglalas, the Boulets, the Minicomps, the Hunk Papas, the Sansarks, the Two Kettles, and the Blackfeet Sioux. By the early 1700s, they had all seen the power of the gun firsthand as they faced the wrath of the Algonquin and the Chippewa. But they still didn't place a high value on the weapon. They would place a high value on something they would begin to acquire in 70 to 80 years. It was an animal with four legs that could run like the wind, and it would change the culture of nearly every tribe west of the Mississippi River. We'll make some multiple guns. In 711 AD, Muslim armies, commonly referred to as the Moors, crossed the Strait of Gibraltar from North Africa to Spain and conquered the country. With them came a smaller, faster horse than existed in Europe. Just cut this all this off. breed had spent hundreds of years evolving and adapting to the dry desert climate of the Middle East and North Africa, and it could run circles around its huge, slow cousins from Northern Europe and Scandinavia. For the next 800 years, Christian armies fought to retake Spanish lands from the African conquerors and their faster horses. In 1492, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella finally defeated the last Muslim kingdom in Spain, and that same year, they sponsored the voyage of an Italian explorer named Christopher Columbus. Show me how to, how to do this. A rapid succession of military voyages followed Columbus. Show me how easy and within 50 to make years, a Spain had conquered the gun. western half of South America. Everybody, and all, all, all the videos America. I've seen, this, they don't show you how to make After the Spanish established themselves in what is now Mexico, how to, how to make, they moved north into a sparsely populated land that stretched from a river that would be called the Mississippi all the way to the Pacific Ocean. Forgive me for talking and With them, listening to this. They brought the horse. They established missions and forts in present-day Texas, this is gonna New Mexico, anyways. Arizona, so and California. They brutally subjugated the natives they it's found in these lands, forcing them into slavery and converting them to Christianity. I'm native, by the way. In 1680, after a hundred years of Oklahoma suffering Sioux, under the Spanish, Wallapai. a tribe in New Mexico called the Pueblos rose up in one historic revolt. They slaughtered every Spaniard they could find. They destroyed buildings and tore down the symbols of the Christian God they had been that? forced to worship. This one be and they threw open I mean. the gates of the Spanish Show corrals how, 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 and how. let loose thousands of horses onto they the really southern works. plains. It became known as the Great Horse Dispersal. The North American yeah. Mustang yeah. was born, and the culture of the right American there. West was changed this forever. Part right here. The Apaches so found them first, planted, and then the Kiowa and the Comanche, and then the Shoshone and the right Cheyenne, cool this one down. and the Cheyenne began to trade them to the Sioux. See how this one is? The, bristles, the Sioux began integrating the horse into their society in the 1770s right and 1780s. Right At the same time, citizens of 13 right here, colonies in the east were fighting a war for independence right against the Just British. Exactly same spot right here. The Sioux knew almost nothing of these people or their get war. It right here. None of it meant anything to them at the time. But that would change so in less than 30 down. years. It's easily. Get it like that. A brave of the Brule band of the Lakota named Lone Man Shit. gazed up at the night sky, mesmerized by what he saw. Most, if not all, of the people gazed up at the sky for with Alimeno. him. It was early May, 1821. And they were they camped along the Blue Water Creek out. in present-day western Nebraska. On this night, they were transfixed by a meteor shower. 
Streamers of fire trailed across the sky. A few days later, Lone Man's wife walks as she thinks, Lame gave birth to his first out. son. Lame motherfucking niggas Lone out. Man named him Red Cloud to appease the great spirit after the brilliant meteor shower. Just kidding. All the headmen of the band agreed this was a wise choice. But Lone Man but made very few Lame wise choices after that. Just four years later, in 1825, he died of alcoholism. I live on the reservation, so I his wife was forced to take her three children back to her own band of people, the Oglala, where her close relative, Old Smoke, was the head man. Old Smoke and his brother, Whitehawk, became father all figures right. to young so Red Man. They taught the boy everything, Got and he this. absorbed all the wisdom and tradition like a sponge. While Red Cloud grew and learned the Got ways of his right people, the Western here. Lakota were already being Sit pestered by the whites from yeah. the East to sign Easy. treaties. In 1825, the year Red they Cloud's father died, the U.S. wanted the Hunk Papa's band of the Lakota use, to sign uh, a trade glue, agreement. Down. Even at this early stage of the history of the U.S., glue, the Western down. tribes had heard of the double standards applied to these treaties, they one, and they didn't really take them seriously. Wrap it with a Even string. if they wanted to, it would have been virtually impossible for them to understand the language of the agreement, a fact that was surely not lost on the whites. Here's the introduction to that 1825 treaty. This was I'm going to try to do there. this in one breath. Perfectly this is one on sentence with 16 commas. Right For the so purpose of perpetuating the friendship which tape. has heretofore existed, Doesn't matter what as also to remove all future right cause of discussion and dissension, right as it respects tape. trade and friendship with Off the United States thing. and their citizens, and the Hunk Pampas Band and the Sioux Tribe of Indians, the President yeah. of the United Some States, by Atkinson, of the United Doesn't States Army, and Major Benjamin O'Fallon, Indian agent, thing. with full powers and authority, especially appointed for that purpose, right of the one part, and the undersigned chiefs, headmen, and warriors of the said Hunk Papa's band of the Sioux Indians, on behalf of their band, of the other part. Doesn't As with most treaties, the assembled Hunk Papas shrugged and said, sure, okay, and accepted their gifts. You then they went on their way as it. if nothing had happened. It's the same razor. They knew the treaty was not much more than just words on a page. And there was no way they could fully understand those words and complicated phrases anyway. So the whole process was not much more than just a gift-giving ceremony. In the Oglala camps, Red Cloud grew up fast. Yeah. He learned all the essentials of becoming a warrior. Sure you just have to and chief it among them were one. shooting and riding. Easily. A Lakota warrior so could fire fast. half a dozen arrows in the time it took a white soldier to reload his musket. It was said that the best warriors could fire ten arrows so fast, all ten would be in the air at the same time. Skip the... The U.S. Army would learn of these skills firsthand in about 30 years when Red Cloud yeah, unleashed his warriors, including his top field commander, Crazy Horse. But for now, Red Cloud was still learning their use. He was learning how to train his pony to hunt buffalo. Before the horse, the Lakota hunted buffalo you on foot, it. and it was exceedingly difficult off your sock, and dangerous. Off your... A group of warriors would have to crawl toward Anything the herd on their shrink. stomachs. They were draped in wolf skins and tried take, to single out an individual down. animal. They would Snow fire a volley of arrows into it to bring the animal down. Or, if possible... They would stampede a herd over a cliff. But with the horse, a single warrior could bring down numerous animals. And now, the hunt became a matter of pride and prestige, as well as the most important process to sustain the tribe with food, clothing, and tools. Yeah. Warriors now marked their arrows so everyone could see how many animals they killed, and of what size. But to train a horse to run alongside a stampeding herd right. of buffalo was a long process. Kind of sloppy, but I don't From like birth, I don't the horse was smeared with buffalo tape. fat and draped with buffalo robes so it would get used to the scent of the animal. A sort of bridle was made from buffalo hair and Can used to there. train the you horse. Tape from anywhere. Tape from Warriors there. would ride their hunting ponies at full gallop in and out of the tribe's horse herd to get anywhere. the animal used to the chaos Just of the hunt. Anywhere. And Warriors had one pony that was used exclusively for labels. hunting. Red Cloud learned all of these essential tools of life, and many more from his uncle's so old smoke and white hawk. But even more important than these skills, he learned the mythology that would drive his actions and would be the heart of his war against the army. He learned
learned of a central figure in Lakota lore, Iktomi the trickster. One day, Iktomi was out walking around, admiring the magnificent landscape around him, when he came across a hole in the ground. The hole seemed to be breathing. Air rushed in and out like a living thing, inhales and exhales. He looked into the hole and saw creatures living inside. He told them to come up here and see the beautiful world he was looking at. Why would they want to live down in that hole? Eventually, one of them climbed out of the hole, looked at the world, and went back down and told the others how wonderful it was. But the others were still hesitant. Finally, an elder decided to go up and be the first to live in the new world. The elder climbed out of the hole and then changed into Buffalo Nation, or as we call them today, the Lakota, and the people spread across the plains. The hole where the people had been living is called Wind Cave, and it still exists today with its unusual phenomenon of air rushing in and out, it's as if it's breathing. Process. It's Wind Cave is in the Black Hills, and it's, it's why the Lakota call the Black first. Hills the heart of everything that done, is, simply. and why Red Cloud and thousands of others fought for 30 Just years to keep right whites here. out of the area. Just they call this one a pancake, pancake motor. This one they call Jolly Rancher. But Red Cloud grew up fast, both physically and figuratively. He became a warrior and commander that any modern general would be desperate to have. He filled out to six feet tall and was well built. He was ruthless, relentless, and fearless. And in his youth, he was arrogant. He took his first scalp at 16 years old during a raid on the Pawnee, whom the Lakota nearly decimated after years of war. The Pawnee would become scouts for the U.S. Army in later years as a way to get revenge. When his uncle Whitehawk was killed, Red Cloud took over leadership of the Man's Warrior Society within the Oglala. In his early 20s, Red Cloud killed a rival of another band. His Oglala were the largest and most powerful band of the seven in the Lakota tribe, and this action now made Red Cloud the de facto war chief of the Oglala and of all the Western Sioux. There were still older men who were technically in charge, men like his uncle, Old Smoke, but they were mostly peacetime chiefs. In times of war, the people turned to Red Cloud. But his rise to power was not without obstacles or devastating tragedy. A Lakota man could marry as many wives as he could afford. When two people were in love, the custom at the time was for the groom to offer gifts to the father of the potential bride in exchange for her hand in marriage. As Red Cloud grew into his 20s, he fell in love with two women, Pine Leaf and Pretty Owl. He was more attracted to Pine Leaf. She was essentially his first love. But a problem dogged his early years. He was a respected warrior, but he was also ambitious and his paternal lineage was standing in the way of rising further within the tribe. Even though he had been raised by prominent members of his mother's people, the Oglala, he was still a Brule by birth. Is Brule is a French that. name, which roughly translates to burnt. Red Cloud's father had died a humiliating death from the white man's liquor, which the Lakota called the water that makes men crazy. This humiliation was blocking his ascension, no matter how great a warrior he was. So while he desperately wanted to marry Pine Leaf, she it's came like from a more common family. Too. Pretty Owl was from a more prominent family, and it would be a better political move to marry her first. Although a Lakota man could marry multiple women, the first was always granted a place of greater status. That is so social, right? Despite his love for Pine Leaf, he forced himself to marry Pretty Owl first. The, the people moment. rejoiced at the prospect of a long-awaited marriage. Everyone except Pine Leaf. After Pretty Owl's father accepted Red Cloud's gifts, two days of feasting and celebrating followed. But throughout the joyous occasion, Red Cloud was restless. The marriage ceremony would good, take place at the end of the, the second day, and a... he tried to find a chance to talk privately with Pine Leaf it's and tell pen. her he still loved her it's and he wanted to make her his second wife. But in the midst of the celebration, the opportunity never presented itself. Okay, now we're gonna put this. At the end of the second day, on, Red Cloud part. and Pretty Owl were married, 
and retired to their honeymoon right lodge. Put this on. The next morning, Red Cloud stepped out at dawn to go gather his horses from the surrounding the... hills. As he passed a oh, single sorry. tree near his lodge, he this froze right in his tracks. This Pine Leaf's side by body side. hung from a rope tied to a branch. She had hanged herself sometime in the night. Reasons. It Probably took a long time for Red Cloud and the Oglala to recover from Pine Leaf's suicide. But the cold reality of the situation was that they were forced to move on to deal with an issue that was beginning to threaten all the tribes west of the Missouri River. The white man. Pop this one right there. Get a razor. Just cut this What had begun as a trickle of mountain men in the 1820s and 1830s had turned into a flood by the 1840s. that part off right here. Whites from the east moved through the Dakota lands at an incredible rate in the late 1840s. This is really simple. By 1848, the United Cut States right claimed there. all the land from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Cut Ocean that. and from Canada this to Mexico. Pushed down. Lands that tribes of every description had lived on for down. hundreds of years. Just In just 45 years, the U.S. had used treaties and wars that yeah. the tribes in the West knew very little about, if anything, to add all this land it's to that. its growing nation. And the westward expansion, dubbed Manifest this Destiny, this just came began. Off pen right here. One of these pens. Mormons moved through Lakota Doesn't lands matter. in 1847 and 1848 to it's settle near the pen. Great Salt Lake in modern-day Utah. John Sounds Sutter cool. found gold in a stream near his sawmill right in 1848. This part and the right next here, year, that a off. torrent of whites hurried off. to this California with dreams of golden the riches in their heads. What's just this one? Between 1849 and 1851, right more than 20,000 wagons rolled through this native lands, and the out. deep ruts created by their wheels are still visible in some places today. Candle. The estimated 50,000 travelers right used two main roads, this the Oregon road. Trail this to the north right and the Santa Fe Trail trash. to the south. This is trash. The trails became stinking this lanes good. littered with discarded goods right of every kind. We'll take it off. We'll put this right here. Animal this carcasses were needles. strewn along the grass. Travelers who died were buried in shallow graves, which were often Pulled dug up by like wolves. See, this the the smell from the rotting one. corpses defiled the air. Trash now too. Whites from the east had no concept of the vastness of the west and were not prepared for the, the, prepared for the miles and miles of grass with no water or shade. Some of them carried this pianos or grandfather clocks in their wagons, put this one inside and those here. things were eventually thrown out and left put to rot. Here. Put it inside of Whites this. fouled the streams with their waste and cluttered the land with their garbage here. and spread disease to people who had no like immunities this. or medicines for treatment. Uh, get the gun. In 1849, gun. the U.S. bought a small way station from a French like trader in Scroll eastern place, Wyoming territory right called here. Fort John. It had been constructed 15 years over earlier over by two mountain men as a trading post and then sold and expanded over the years. Right the Army wanted to reorganize and expand it and send soldiers to guard it as the western hub for travelers. They called it Fort Laramie, My and two God. years later, it became the site of the largest gathering of tribes in history, and the first major attempt at treaty talks with the tribes of the Northern Plains. It was a grand show, and set the stage for 25 years of bloodshed. See, this will go like that. This will, the needle will go inside of here, actually, like this. In the 1840s See, and early right 1850s, right as white right people rushed here. west across the lands of the Lakota and Cheyenne in search of, of gold, the tribes right killed them on the, the trails. The barrel. New travelers saw the like bones that. of the dead on the prairies they passed. See it right now. And it was not just because the travelers Shit were driving right across the best hunting the grounds. Best one. The whites were starting to pose this a real danger to Lakota way of life. Really like so. They were killing the buffalo simply for the animal's hide. No they stripped the fur and maybe took a little meat for themselves, but Go they left the rest to be there. picked over by scavengers. Not only was this an intolerable waste of the primary resource of the Lakota, but it was an unconscionable insult to the animal's spirit. The livelihood of the Lakota was tied to the buffalo. Kind of if you were going to kill the animal, you had better make its death mean something. The death there, better help bring right life to like others. That. To kill it only for its tongue and its skin was blasphemy. So the Lakota and the Cheyenne and others killed the people it's who committed right these in. crimes. By 1851, the U.S. government knew it needed sure to do something about the killing. Way. 
it wouldn't and couldn't stop its citizens from going west, so a treaty was needed. Cool. That fall, it called a great council at Fort Laramie to discuss a deal. 10,000 natives gathered at the fort in early September. Among them were three men who would soon become legends. Red Cloud, Sitting Bull, and Crazy Horse. Red Cloud was 30 years old and a recognized leader of his people. Sitting Bull was a rising star at 20 years old. Crazy Horse was just 11, but it wouldn't take long for him to earn nearly unprecedented accolades. Right. The Indian agent, right a man top. named Thomas Fitzpatrick, acknowledged that the whites were killing the buffalo and destroying the prairie. The U.S. was prepared to pay $50,000 per year to compensate the tribes for the passage of white travelers and the establishment of small forts to build the wagon trains. In return, the tribe should outline the boundaries of their land and elect one person to negotiate with the government of the Great Father in the East. As before, the leaders of the tribes basically Shove shrugged and said, sure, whatever, and waited for their promised gifts to arrive. Like that. So the things right the whites there. wanted were so patently Let's absurd, right they there. couldn't possibly be taken seriously. Whites right. completely it's misunderstood same. two fundamental it's aspects of the tribes, it's it's the same ownership it's right and leadership. Down. The tribes like couldn't create boundaries for it's their the land same. because the land wasn't theirs. Could they use didn't a bee, own it. They couldn't bee. own it. No one Flat could. Beat. You couldn't yeah, own the soil and the grass right and the here. trees and the streams this one. any more than you could own the wind That's that blew across it. This one right here. You could hunt on this part it and occupy it while you were there, from this but that was it. This you didn't part. build permanent structures on it, and you didn't tear it up to plant things. That. The most you could do was claim the this best trash, hunting grounds this, and then manage them as long as you could, will, could still which use meant that. you held them as long as you could fight for them. Check the battery right now. If another tribe was stronger, it right, would yeah. push you off the this. land. That was the entire history so of the people of the plains. You have the, the and if the idea of setting tribal burn boundaries was ridiculous, the idea of one person like speaking this. for everyone right was downright insane. That was flat out impossible. A just chief or a right headman was considered a leader of his people, and his words and carried weight. Just pull it off. But he couldn't order a warrior to do something, this, 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 especially not a warrior that. from just another band right or another Check tribe. It right here. Check and it even right. if the Check tribes it. could somehow yeah. instantly reverse hundreds of years this of tradition, they knew the whites would never live up now. to their end of the deal. So the whole thing was basically just a thinly veiled sham, and the tribes gave it exactly that much weight. The head men who touched the pen, as the signing process was called, did so more as a formality than out of an touch. earnest belief they in touch. the agreement. They don't, it doesn't work. Touching the pen was a literal description of the procedure. None of the chiefs could write, so they would walk up to a table one by one and touch the top of a pen that was held by a secretary. That signaled their willingness to sign the treaty. And then the secretary wrote touch. the name of the man on the document. See, they got this motor At the end right of a long ceremony, motor. the tribes left Fort Laramie and went on their fall buffalo hunt. And as far as we know, things were relatively quiet for it's about two years. Like I got this one. Out. I got this battery out of the fire detector. In 1853, so the, so we have a fire. Violence flared up between soldiers and a be. band of Lakota called the Mini Kanju. I always Fort like mine to go counterclockwise, both sides. But it could go. The next year, it happened again. Oh, I like mine to go in clockwise instead of counterclockwise. Counterclockwise is to one. It's the wrong the way for me. Forces of Oglala, I always like mine to go to the right. Spinning, them all. spinning clockwise. This was likely the first time Red Cloud so that's, killed a white that's man. That's that one. Then how you measure this? The next summer, the mini right conjures here, and the Brulees, under a leader named we'll Spotted right Tail, here. attacked this, numerous wagon we'll trains, right killing and burning and mutilating corpses. Same thing like this. At the same time in the Oglala camps, Red Cloud see was being given another great right honor. He was Pitch elevated right to chieftain same, status. This, one. this didn't make sure mean he was a chief, cut it right here, though. but he was now part of so an elite group right and eligible to be chief someday. The army also so made changes that right summer. Right it placed there. Colonel William Harney in command of the area around Fort Laramie. The Lakota called him Mad Bear, and it was a good title. He hated Indians. And he had been kicked out of the army once already, but yeah, brought back so because his former neighbor right was now president, it's James K. Paul. 
Harney and his new hand-picked Indian agent ordered all the bands in the area to move into Fort Don't Laramie. Cut it too, too but when much one stayed behind to keep hunting, just slide on right Harney through. rode out with 600 smooth. soldiers to find it. When he did, he killed 86 people and butchered their bodies. He took another 70 prisoner in what was called afterward the Battle of Ash Creek. But it wasn't a battle. It was just a slaughter. And a pattern was taking okay. shape in the press That's after such cool. engagements. When whites killed Indians, it was called a battle. When Indians killed whites, it was called a massacre. The pattern was taking shape in the press after such engagements. When whites killed Indians, it was called a battle. When Indians killed whites, it was called a massacre. The following spring, Harney effectively ended the treaty that had been signed at Fort Laramie five years earlier. He told the tribes to stay away from the Oregon Trail, which was fertile hunting grounds, and that he was taking the western half of North Dakota, so South like Dakota, that. and Nebraska for the United States. Make sure goes this land, snow. of course, go. included the sacred Black Hills. Just one more time. That fall, Lakota thing. messengers traveled Let's to all the bands of the Western off. Sioux. Their message so was threefold. Enjoy your peaceful winter camps. Have a Let's good buffalo hunt time. in the spring. And then prepare to meet right for here. a grand council. Just it was time to unite off. against the whites. Go ahead and whatever. Right there. Okay, go one more time. Three quarters of the Western Sioux gathered along the Belfouche River near Bear Butte in what is today South Dakota. It was August 1857, and the Grand Council assembled to decide how to handle the blue coat soldiers and the white travelers. Two prominent voices argued for immediate raids. They belonged to Red Cloud and Sitting Bull. The two men were not friends. They were not cordial, but they were on the same side of this issue. And they proposed the same action. But some older so chiefs going, urged caution. Long. They advised a wait and Cut see approach. Don't kick the nice. hornet's nest, they said. Crazy Horse was a young brave at this time, just 16 years old. But he had already ago. proved himself to be fearless on raids. Okay, now he was an exceedingly like quiet nice young man. Right he rarely spoke. Right so here. when he did, people listened. He had been born into the Brule band of the Lakota tribe now. of the Western Sioux. But he was something of a good. nomad. It's all good. It's he all roamed stuff, freely right? across the plains and stayed with and raided with different bands. See, like that. It now, right he here. repeated a story he had so, heard on his travels. He had learned from a Cheyenne measure, warrior that some blue coat soldiers now carried small guns, much it's smaller bad. than rifles, that could be strapped to their hips and fired many times without reloading. This was definitely something to consider at the council. In the end, they chose something close to the wait and see approach. As before, no man could tell another what to do. So if a war party wanted to raid the whites, they could do it. But in general, they would not coordinate large scale raids. Two things were agreed upon by everyone. The Black Hills must be protected at all costs. This and each right band there. was to it's defend its chosen right hunting we'll ground this out to the death. Put right here. Got to get that ball out. Just got to clip it. Clip it like this. The 1860 census said It'll there were come. roughly 31 million people in the United States. And 90% of them Just lived east of out. the Mississippi River. The ball came out. That percentage was anymore. about to shift dramatically. Could see it. it clipped it. Gold had Just been discovered near Cherry Creek in Colorado it Territory. Right on the tip. Just on the lands the of the Southern clip Cheyenne and Arapaho. Clip that out. Boomtown sprang up called Cut Denver, off, you know. and six years later, it would be the clean launch pad for the massacre clean that would become the tipping point for Red clean. Cloud. And Silver had been discovered in the mountains of Nevada, like the famous Comstock load, and gold had been found in Montana. Fortune seekers out. streamed west. Just gotta clean By 1860, water. the Oregon Trail was so safe that a system to carry the mail from the Midwest out. to California Eventually. had been established. We'll like Riders that. of the Pony Express delivered mail from St. Joseph, Missouri so to Sacramento, California in just 10 out. days this in good weather. Right here. 14 in bad clipped weather. Out. This is the barrel. This and then in 1861, right war broke out in the east this between the Union and the Confederacy. 
Almost overnight, Put it back in. troops yeah. in the West were reduced to a skeleton crew. Like that. Then this will be the in the same summer of 1862, the Lakota in Minnesota like rose that. up and killed numerous whites. Here. But their uprising was quickly crushed by the army. The yeah. largest mass execution in American history one. followed. 38 so, Lakota men were hanged at the same time. Here. Six months later, that, on January 1st, 1863, right the Homestead this Act will go right in there. It offered 160 acres of land that had been surveyed by the government to needle. anyone who could live on it for five years go and right make improvements. This needle will go right in it didn't there. work as smoothly as the government had envisioned, Same thing. This but it still lured right 300,000 people to the West. Put this in if you want to. Like While that. all this was happening, this all Red through. Cloud and his Oglalas so smashed into their hated right enemies, the Crows, and pushed them out of the area known as the Powder River Country. The land became his most so cherished like hunting grounds, and it encompassed the northeastern so corner of present-day Wyoming and the southeastern like corner that. of present-day Montana. He was far to the north of the Oregon Trail and lived relatively free of white interference. He, he was here when like refugees from Colorado Territory in, straggled into his camps Keep begging for help. They had a terrible story water. to tell. Water. He was cleaning it up. I'm going to go ahead and cut this part now. The back and forth fighting in the area around Denver Probably had ramped like up in the spring of 1864. Right here, maybe. A U.S. Right Army here. volunteer unit Same had attacked four Cheyenne, one, Cheyenne had, like, villages. In response, Cheyenne, Lakota, we'll and Arapaho here. warriors had wreaked right havoc here. on any whites they could find. They terrorized ranches. Matter. They destroyed way stations. They killed travelers. They did it's so much damage cut. that the road from Fort Leavenworth to Denver was temporarily closed. Then soldiers attacked a Cheyenne village and killed a chief it's named Lean Bear. In there. So, when he died, Lean Bear so was wearing a medal that had been given to him by President Abraham here. Lincoln. The medal signified peace. Like that, like Three weeks later, warriors this brutally killed the Hungate family on its ranch shorter. 25 miles southeast of Denver. But a group of white men is. brought the bodies of the family members into so the city go, and displayed here, them so the citizens the, could see the atrocities for themselves. This will go back in here. As you'd expect, into the, the people of Denver were in an uproar. I'll show you how to make the needle. Territorial Governor so John Evans organized a here. regiment of volunteer cavalry for an enlistment of 100 days. Its sole purpose was to pursue, kill, and destroy all hostile Indians that infest here, the plains. Colonel John Milton Chivington was giving command. He was six right foot five it. and two hundred and sixty pounds down. This one right with this. a thick black beard and a booming voice. The metal part and he hated the Indians goes. with a religious fervor. Make sure your needle sticks but out. Before at he least could make much progress much. with his mission. The commander of a right fort here. southeast of Denver brought many this chiefs part, of the Cheyenne and Arapaho right to the bargaining so table. Right Major Edward so, Wincoop, who has a street named after him in downtown Denver today. Right reached a tentative agreement with Cheyenne Chief Black Kettle and others. He then escorted so the tribal leaders so to a meeting that. with Governor Evans and Colonel Chivington. So the, the governor so told the chiefs turn, that they are now my, at war with the United thumb, States and they must make a deal with the army L. representative, Colonel Chivington. Like that. Like that. Chivington told the men they must you surrender themselves like to Major Wincoop at Fort Lyon if they desire peace. Could use this, could, could, and of course, it. the implication is off. that if you're not at Fort Lyon, or you could just you're considered use hostile. Thumb, like this, and measure it. Roughly 750 Cheyenne and Arapaho began and arriving in the area around like Fort this. Lyon. It'll break it. In the meantime, a new commander had arrived at the Keep fort. Going back and forth, back and forth. Major Wincoop stayed at the break. fort for another couple weeks to brief the new commander on the agreement. It'll break. And then the new commander told the chiefs they should lead their people back to their usual camps while he waited for further instructions. While the two commanders worked with the tribal leaders at Fort Lyon, Colonel Chivington quietly moved his break. volunteer cavalry toward the outpost. On November 26, 1864, Major Wincoop right left there. Fort Lyon for his new assignment in Kansas. Two out. days later, right about, Colonel right Chivington here. arrived. He surrounded the fort with guards so no one could get in or out. At dawn on November 29th, he led 750 troopers toward the Cheyenne and Arapaho camps along the banks of Sand Creek. That morning, most of the warriors were out hunting. 
Chivington gave the order to charge, get this back and his there. untrained get soldiers swooped down on the village. All get semblance of military order was gone in seconds. All you gotta do the soldiers killed anyone this. they found. All Black the Kettle through. rushed out of Put his lodge. In. He had been told that as long as like he threw a white flag and an American flag above his lodge, his people would be safe. He had done the... everything that had been asked of him during the peace now process. The... Now his people were being slaughtered. See it right here. A fellow chief, White Antelope, who had been yeah, prominent in the right peace there. talks, was shot in the no, throat. Old men, women, one. and children rushed toward Sand Creek to find shelter. The few braves who were still in camp Hope tried to protect up. them. For two take hours, this tape Chivington's like men picked them off one by one. Tape it up like that. Those want who want were lucky enough to escape, others. including Black Kettle, hurried across the frozen like ground that. toward the hunting camp of the warriors many miles away. Like Chivington's unit spent the rest of the day killing the wounded and mutilating the bodies of the dead. The cavalry finally departed Sand Creek at dusk. More than 230 Cheyenne and Arapaho lay dead. Roughly 150 of whom were women, children, and the elderly. So, when the refugees so, finally so finished the story of the Sand Creek Massacre, so Red Cloud so and all of those Let's who heard it, it were filled with rage. Eight years earlier, That's he had it. pushed for immediate raids right against there. the whites, but they had been put off. That's the motor. Now, See how it is. Red Cloud was done waiting. It's working now. This tattoo right here. It's not sharp, I didn't sharpen the, the needle, but you could, could see clearly. Throughout the spring of 1865, Red Cloud welcomed not Lakota, Cheyenne, and Arapaho warriors to his growing army. You could make he a way better, better, better L plans. than this. This L is not but working summer, too good. He and his warriors the fired the first shots of Red Cloud's war. Everything is, is legit. That's next time here. on the Legends Everything of the works. Old West podcast. Good, good. Good to work with. Show, Easy, light, please give it a rating shady. And when you do shading, do a circle. Snip it. You can nip, check out our nip, website nip, at blackbarrelmedia.com and circle, follow us circle, on social circle, media. Seize. Our Facebook page seize is Legends of the Old West Podcast. Seize, like, and our handles on Twitter and Instagram are that, at okay. Old West Podcast. Let's see what else is going on. Thanks for listening. That one. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. More better. You could see this one's more. I have, I have more better stuff. This is the. Uh, this is mine. You're on the brink. This is my, uh, The hot-tempered Irish general screamed at the young soldier in front of several thing. witnesses. Connor asked Collins if he was a coward. And of course, Collins said no. Go ahead and write. Connor told him to get back to his post of view. Collins rode back to Bridge Station and almost straight into Red Cloud's tent. On the afternoon of July 25th, 1865, Red Cloud's forces hid behind the this hills outside the station. station. His numbers included Cheyenne warriors, as well as fighters from every bank in Lakota. He tried the age-old tactic first. You saw he, he practiced, if you want to just use a pen, to use pen. Up onto the hills to talk practice with a uh, tattoo, and you nip, nip it, nip. At first, it seemed to work. Nip, the gates uh, opened, nip, and nip an your... artillery unit marched out. But it stopped at the bridge across the Platte River and just lobbed oh, yeah. shells at the decoys. As the sun set, it was clear that the soldiers would advance no farther. Oh, this wall and Red Cloud called in his decoys. It seemed the soldiers had finally learned their lesson Soon. from past days. Soon Asian. That night, Red Cloud Hope changed you. his plan. Apache. Apache. This wall fire. Wildfire. At dawn the next morning, Two. the soldiers at Bridge Station Hopey. again saw warriors Apache. parading in front, but they were Crazy much closer this time. Tattoo. The warriors My shouted in some and implored the soldiers to come out and fight. So this is a uh, battery pack that Casper I made. Collins formed a small detail of 28 uh, men to go outside. Several soldiers pleaded with him to take more up. men. Collins put a piece of metal down here. Maybe General Connor's indirect right accusation of cowardice echoed in his mind. Uh, Maybe not. Razor blade, Either way, same he had a job to do. Razor blade, the warriors the didn't know it, but Collins half, wasn't going out to like give this. them the battle they wanted. He was going like out to that. provide an escort this for five like freight wagons that were as returning as touch, from an outpost to the west. Super glue it, whatever you have to do, just make sure it sticks. 
Trouble after 7:30 a.m. on July 26th, 1865. Rapid Collins signaled the, for the gates to open. come out like this. He led his this column of cavalry outside. So if I take Eleven these two, volunteers these two followed them right on here. foot to act as a rear guard. It'll go like this. Collins this led his right men here. across the bridge and into the valley beyond. And this one right here. The infantry soldiers stopped at the bridge to stay within relative safety of the fort. Collins right and his here. troopers this advanced right half here. a mile into the valley and then Red Cloud's forces attacked. The Lakota charged over the hills from the north. The Cheyennes swooped in from the west. Collins shouted at his men to fire in both directions. They let loose one volley into the screaming warriors, and then the warriors were on top of them. Collins was hit in the hip, and he reeled in the saddle. Oh, yeah. Arrows, knives, spears, tomahawks, and war clubs That's the same slashed and stabbed the troopers. Right the soldiers reloaded weeks. and fired as fast as they could. Has to be like five volts. Thankfully, this one's, uh, they carried Spencer carbines instead this of muskets. Uh, nine volts. But they were now useless in close here. quarters combat. This one. The troops pulled there. their revolvers so that's and the went first, to work with those instead. This is the first tattoo machine seconds, right here. The battlefield was That'd a churning, confusing mass this of dust and guns. This one's my tattoo machine. The dust and this smoke has four batteries, so that would be five fighters. volts all together. And the lookouts at Bridge Station five could volts, no longer could see their comrades. Five volts, you could see Except over the volts right here. It says it Through on a there. gap in the swirling fog, As the they saw an arrow right bury itself in the forehead of Casper Collins. It says Collins. once, 1.5 1. volts. Moments later, a horse raced out of the haze and retreated so to the fort. For four batteries, it will be six volts. Another horse Two batteries will be three volts. The rear guard now Three fired times. into the battle to cover the retreat Two of the soldiers six who could escape. So that's right there. And then warriors from Red Cloud so one point five volts. Called the bad this is a nine volt. Jumped this up from their hiding spots one. near the bridge. Which is good. They attacked the troopers that had been lucky enough I, I, to escape. I would work with the it. soldiers of the rear it's guard good, charged good the bad faces. You can see it's still working. Desperately right trying to keep the escape it's pretty open. strong. A second battle now raged near the bridge. So it's good. Riderless horses streamed back toward the fort. A cannon but, um, boomed from the outpost. Go ahead and use this one. And then Red Cloud signaled so the Cheyenne that one, battle that's command. That's that. Roman tattoo knows, machine. To take his dog soldiers out Show of the fight. another mind. tattoo machine right There was here. a small wagon train approaching the distance. Some people go distance. like this, too. They use As this. the lead scouts for the wagon train crested they, a hill, they saw they 500 to, uh, Cheyenne warriors bearing put down this part on them. On. They galloped toward the they Platte use. River and tried to splash across it. This is just the part that will fit on there. This is the pin. Pen, right? The men just driving the wagons realized they pen. would never make it to the fort or the river. Which is they literally circled their wagons in a this hollow pen. beside the road. They took up defensive positions and tried uh, to corral their horses, but the Cheyenne captured them and led them away. But the men were now trapped so in a shallow like this, depression like with no mounts and this no way out. The pen that I cut, which is but this pen. they had seven shots, Spencer which rifles. This one. For the next four hours... The warriors the picked off thing. the Americans one like by that. one, but they couldn't sustain a full Let's charge. Cut this one. The Americans' firepower was too much for that. Cut it. Cut it right So the here. warriors changed their strategy. They dismounted right and began cut slowly slithering on their stomachs toward the Americans from all sides. They dug shallow trenches so with knives like and tomahawks to Put conceal themselves as they moved forward this through the high grass. On there. Hour by hour, they worked their way toward the Americans. The men small. in the hollow couldn't see them, That's and the used, warriors uh, had gone strangely was silent, it was just which was now pen. more unnerving than their terrifying battle cries. Just, just go like but that. the soldiers on the walls right on of Bridge Station could see very could see well it. what was happening. They started firing cannons toward the hollow to warn the men of the danger that was creeping toward them, but the freighters didn't understand so, the warning. Like so. Around 4 o'clock that afternoon, put this one the right warriors there, leapt up as if they'd been launched straight out of the ground. This one. A huge fire broke Skip out, this, and then the men on the walls of Bridge Station could see nothing through the smoke. Then just the warriors burned down. the men in the wagons in the hollow. As night fell, there were 28 like soldiers missing and presumed dead, right and twice as many Probably wounded. The telegraph Get lines the, to Fort Laramie had been cut. A half-blood scout had to slip out of Bridge Station the, under the cover of darkness and ride 28 miles to the nearest telegraph to transmit the news of the attack to Laramie. But while the Americans may have felt defeated, this one right Red Cloud did not feel victorious. Right His undisciplined forces had allowed too many soldiers then. to escape. He had not Get wiped the out the men again. in the fort, 
Right War destroyed the fort itself. Gotta do is just heat it up. And now there was infighting between the Lakota and the Cheyenne. Red Cloud and Roman and Nose were able to smooth nice it over, red. but it wasn't the best beginning to the war. Push through. Red Cloud hoped he could hold this coalition together, and that the warriors would learn from this engagement. If they knew nothing else, they knew the blue coats would come in force to retaliate. And they did. And now it was General Connor's turn to hunt down Red Cloud. See, it went right through. See, it's stuck in there. It's went right through. Kind of get it hot. Major General John Pope had been banished to Minnesota after his miserable performance as the commander of the Union Army during the Civil War. He had been soundly beaten by Confederate Generals Stonewall Jackson and James Longstreet at the Second Battle of Bull Run in 1862. And afterward, President Lincoln sent him west. By the summer of 1865, General Ulysses S. Grant had led the Union forces to victory, and the War Department divided the entire country into military divisions and departments as Reconstruction began. So that will go right there. General William Tecumseh Sherman commanded one of the five divisions, See, the division of the Mississippi, right which was essentially the West. Just right in there. Within his division was the Department oh, of the God. Missouri, which included the High Plains, commanded by Major General John Pope. So fit right in there. One of Pope's chief responsibilities was to make the Bozeman Trail safe for travelers, a trail that ran right through Red Cloud's stronghold of the Powder River country. The Bozeman Trail was a northern offshoot of the Oregon Trail. It ran directly to the gold fields of western Montana. It cut 400 miles off the trip, and that made it a valuable commodity to the U.S. government. After the Civil War, gold was the only real currency of any value in the East, and the U.S. government desperately needed more of it to rebuild after the devastation of four years of war. And as always, Individuals wanted hit, to get I don't like rich. This. I don't like this because this always hits. So Pope had to open the Bozeman Trail. Oh, the trail had been right traced by John Bozeman in 1863, and he had managed to leave one wagon train Just across like it in that. 1864. In. But two more attempts had been stopped by the Lakota and Just Cheyenne. Like Pope handed the task of finally okay. opening the road to Major General Grenville Dodge. This part. The first Just step was to wipe spins. out Red Cloud and his army. Spins Dodge around. gave that chore to General Patrick Connor, who was now in Same command of Fort right Laramie. Still spins. Still. Red Cloud had just attacked, one. but not I destroyed, like Bridge Station. It's more smoother, the it's not as loud. This one's loud. So it makes At nearly the same time, racket. Sitting Bull had attacked racket. Fort Rice in present-day North Dakota. This part right here. When the soldiers of like Fort this, Rice had mortar, repelled the assault, this. the fort was well positioned, and the one. soldiers could see for miles in every direction. Headphones, they spotted Sitting Bull's forces and pounded them with artillery. Either. They it refused to like leave that. the fort to engage headphones. Sitting Bull's warriors on the ground. And eventually headphones, Sitting Bull one. gave up the fight. This is a charger. After the Cut twin that. attacks of Red Cloud and Cut Sitting Bull, General Pope and General Dodge Cut devised a complicated plan to crush both chiefs. Scoring General Connor would lead a unit north out of Fort Laramie to destroy Red Cloud and General Alfred Sully would lead a unit north from Sioux City, Iowa to destroy Sitting Bull. The endeavor was a mess from the very beginning. General Sully marched up and down the Missouri River for nearly a month and never caught sight of Sitting Bull. Finally, Terrible the War Department sent his beleaguered troops to Minnesota to put down Terrible an uprising of Lakota near Mankato. What you need but by the time the Sully arrived, the black one. those Lakota were gone as well. They had the slipped into Canada. General Connor decided to use a three-pronged approach to corner Red Cloud on his favorite hunting grounds near the Powder River. He ordered one column to march out of Omaha and move in from the east. Another column would move straight north out of Fort Laramie and approach Red Cloud from the south. And the third, led by Connor himself, would leave Fort Laramie at the same time as the second, but then split off like so it could loop we'll around from the west. Pull these two. The columns from the east and the south out. would link up and then use their combined so strength like to flank Red Cloud's huge Get army. Just Connor would out. bring his 1,000 men in from the other side, and they would all meet in the middle. Right the out. trouble began 
almost immediately. Let's just, let's just Colonel Nelson the Cole one. was about to experience the misery of Colonel one. Moonlight earlier that summer. On the desolate plains of South Dakota, his Put cavalry's this. horses began to die. He Put was losing out. strength Smash simply by walking, right but he pressed on. Put this on. Connor had guessed correctly about the location of Red Cloud's camps, but now he was led astray this by his Pawnee on. scouts. They found a trail of a large group and Connor veered farther west to follow the trail. They found the village of a northern Arapaho headman named Black Bear. They attacked the village, killed like 60 people, Get captured numerous horses, up. and burned the whole thing to the ground. All the lodges, all the food for the coming winter were gone. And Black Bear's son had been killed in what was later called the Battle of Tom so River. The problem out. was... This band of northern Arapaho had been peaceful, this. but they weren't anymore. Wrap these wires. The survivors now Wrap joined Red hand. Cloud in his war against the whites. Wrap it around. Wrap While the it two around, cavalry units around. slowly Just worked like their way toward Red Cloud, Red Cloud like lounged that. in his camps Super and glue. celebrated yeah. the Super glue. Yeah, victory at Bridge Station. Well, well, at one well. point, he was warned that a wagon train was approaching his domain and it was escorted by soldiers. He Get rallied 500 warriors and surrounded the wagon train. But after it ran up a white flag, Red Cloud yeah. and another chief made a deal with the white travelers. They could proceed like west, but they had to go Spoon north like of Red Cloud's hunting grounds. And they had to give him a wagon load of supplies as a tax. The travelers agreed, paid the tax, and left. So. This illustrated another major difference between the cultures. In the Lakota so. culture, War one. was not an all-encompassing, year-round thing. It was seasonal and cyclical. In the winter, you hunkered down in your camps and waited for spring. In the spring, you did the early buffalo hunt. In the summer, you made war on your enemies. In the fall, you did the late buffalo hunt. And then you hunkered down in your winter camps to wait for spring. After the fight at Bridge Station in late July... Red Cloud's this. forces had gone Go back to their down. camps, celebrated the attack, and then prepared for the fall buffalo hunt. They were done fighting for the year. Or at least they just thought tape, so. Tape it down. I would just tape it down. It's not going to hold so all the time. We'll always come out. In late August, 1865, like Colonel Some Nelson tape. Cole's column made contact with Sitting Bull, though Come not on that. purpose. <laughs> Cole had successfully this. guided 2,000 troopers right the between the camps batteries. of Sitting Bull and Red Cloud like without this. seeing a hint of either one. Tape it like this. But as like his cavalry so. moved toward the junction of the Powder River and Use the Yellowstone tape, River yeah. in eastern Montana, Sitting Bull tape found him. Cole was frustrated, and his men were near the point of mutiny. He couldn't make it home. It had been almost a month it. since they last heard from General Connor. How does this Cole sent scouts to find Connor's Make it fancy. I made the scouts returned right with here. nothing but exhaustion. You guys how to, how Unbeknownst to Cole, this is Connor was trying to find him as well. Products in their house. Connor sent scouts to find the other half of his army, so and they also returned like with that. nothing. Up right and that's here. when Sitting Bull found Cole Wrap near it. the Powder River. Wrap Cole's men were worn Scoot out, right and his horses were even worse. Cut it. They had been marching through the heat of the summer for weeks, and now they faced a surprise attack. The four to five hundred warriors shot. charged Cole's force and drove it back into a grove of trees. For four days and nights, the warriors That's kept so the soldiers pinned one. in the trees, but they couldn't Check get close like to the blue coats. The army's so weapons and roll. makeshift defenses saved them, now. but Cole couldn't sit in the right trees here. forever. And it was the high plains weather right here, that forced right him to move. Put it against metal. On the right first here. day of September, a storm blew down how the you wrap it, this how you wrap The it. temperature Spit dropped up, uh, 70 degrees put a little in one metal day. In here. You could use the springs. The soldiers too. burned everything that wasn't vital. Use springs. 200 horses died in the freeze. So right here, I'm going to check it right Finally, here. the soldiers couldn't wait any longer. See it spin they right had now. to move. Sitting Bull's men the harassed them for two right days, here. but made no small. major strike. Sitting Bull sent runners to Red Cloud's camps to tell him the news. After two days, Sitting Bull pulled away so he could remain close to his own camps. And then Red Cloud's warriors took over. Red Cloud was not there himself, but Crazy Horse helped lead the Lakota, 
and Roman Nose led the Cheyenne. The warriors attacked, and Cole's men formed their wagons into a square at the base of some high hills. Crazy Horse, who had earned fame by going on daring rides past the enemy, now tried this tactic to draw out the soldiers. It didn't work. Roman Nose, not to be outdone by the younger Lakota, tried the same thing. He galloped the full length of the army battlements three times, shouting curses and challenges. Dude, On the third, the army shot his horse. Batteries. At that, the warriors attacked in full force, so, but the army repelled them with rifles and field cannons. Again, so the, it was a standoff, the and the Cheyenne quickly grew bored of the stalemate. As as goes, they departed for the Black right Hills there. to prepare for the so fall buffalo too. hunt. Cole used the opportunity to get his men moving again. They resumed their march, knowing that they were shadowed by the remaining Lakota warriors. Oh, it's not working. Somewhere Three it's days not later, working. Cole Somewhere had his first and only stroke of luck. He found Red Cloud. Supposed to Cole's Pawnee scouts and a cavalry unit broken, stumbled onto the eastern the, edge of Red the Cloud's huge camp on the Tongue River. Go ahead and take they spotted 27 Cheyenne, who were some of the last to leave the Black Hills. Then you could pull this the scouts on. and soldiers pounced on the Cheyenne put this and killed on. them all. Put this and now, on. for the first put time, on this one. Cole had the element of surprise. See how easy it is. He prepared to mount an old-fashioned frontal assault right on Red Cloud's camps, and Red Cloud was it. caught completely off guard. You could see Red Cloud scrambled right to get his warriors ready to fight. The women and children so tried to take down the lodges so they could escape. And then Cole's luck ran out. Put this a series of storms in. swept Snow down from the Bighorn Mountains and blasted the plains with 36 this hours of mine. rain and sleet. They ruined any chance of an army attack. The Lakota slipped away during the storms. But columns of warriors stayed behind to keep oh, an yeah. eye on the soldiers. This ugly one right here. Cole's men lost another 400 horses to the so freezing weather. They burned everything they couldn't carry to stay warm. Like that. Most of the in. men were now on foot, and they began the long march home. They, go they were weak and sore and sick with scurvy. For two days, the Lakota flanked the army as it straggled Sometimes back toward home. To it but unlike Sitting Bull's Sometimes men or the Southern Cheyenne who had guns, Red Cloud's warriors still relied on bows take, and arrows. Some time. Those weapons were useless at this distance. If they had had guns, they could have wiped out Cole's forces easily. Even with the disadvantage in weaponry, the it's Lakota still out. looked for the right moment to strike. But, you could see but it never came. That it General Connor's scouts finally found Cole's men. Sometimes. The Lakota disappeared right to here. rejoin their camps for the fall buffalo hunt. And Cole found out what Connor had been doing this whole time. For a reason he never made clear, Connor had stopped this. to build a small stockade that he called Camp Connor. To know, but then more through. importantly, he had rushed to the aid of a wagon train that had been it pinned down by Red Cloud himself for 13 days. Mm -hmm. The wagon train was a crew that was trying to expand the Bozeman Trail. The cavalry had ridden to the rescue. So now but overall, ready to go. it was another failed attempt to open so the trail. Goes, this one. The combined force right there, finally this staggered one. back into Fort Laramie put in October one. 1865. This They'd accomplished see. nothing and wasted the entire fighting season on the high tell. plains. See, spinning now. General Working. Connor was thoroughly disgusted by the outcome. His boss, the, General the Dodge, tried to put a positive spin on the expedition right in his there. official report. Like but it didn't change the facts. Like Red Cloud had not been crushed. Sitting Bull had not been there. crushed. And the Bozeman Get Trail had not been opened. Could tell, but this As is fall not so turned to early right. winter, this the one U.S. Be. government reverted to insult. Go ahead and take this one off. Take this off. Can't beat I don't really like this. Buy him. This thing it would right propose here. a new treaty. But this time, good, the politicians this were not this on the perfect. same page as the I'm generals. Go ahead and disable it. I'm going to go ahead and take it apart now, too. Take this off. In the late fall of 1865, this off. after the disastrous campaigns to destroy Red Cloud, so U.S. Indian one. agents met with new, members of several bands of the Lakota. This is Red good. Cloud's band, the Oglala, was not one of them, and none of the Cheyenne were there. 
Put Members of the right bands here. agreed to the terms of a new treaty, and the newspapers Make back east right proudly now. pronounced peace with the Sioux. So but nothing could have been further from the answer. This is the answer right here. This the following spring, for this General Pope one. issued the order that would provoke the ultimate showdown between the Red Cloud. So in 1866, the most dangerous place on earth for a U.S. soldier was the Powder I'm River. Cut this Red Cloud begins his campaign the, against the doomed soldiers at the new outpost of Fort Phil Carter. Next time on the Legends of the Old West so podcast. Doesn't have to be that long. Sure, if you enjoy the show, please give it a rating and a review on iTunes or wherever you're listening. You can check out our website at blackbarrelmedia.com and follow us on social media. Yeah. Our Facebook page is Legends of the Old West Podcast, and our handles on Twitter and Instagram are at Old West Podcast. Sounds Thanks for listening. Like we'll see you next week. Like that, like that. Get this one. And do the Jolly Rancher now. Jolly Rancher. It comes right off. Okay, just the Jolly Rancher right now. In the fall of 1865, Crash. Red Cloud and Crazy Horse were given the, great honors. Right here, Red Cloud was 44 years old. And he had already held on. chieftain status for 10 years. Rapid. He wasn't considered chief of the Oglala, but he was part of an elite group who could be chief someday. Wrap it up. Now, as General Connor and Colonel Cole wandered right around there. the high plains looking for him, one. Red Cloud was elected to be one of seven headmen who would organize the coming war against the whites. These men were called big bellies, and they would draw up battle plans and oversee the fighting. Wrap it up. Their field commanders would actually lead the war parties, and Crazy Horse had just been given that honor. A year earlier, he had been granted entry into the Stronghearts, one of the Lakota warrior societies similar to the famous Cheyenne Dog Soldiers. Now, Crazy Horse was selected to be one of four shirt wearers. Okay. While this was a literal name for the group, right, this one. it's not the garment we think of today. Put this one on. Each man this was be given a shirt one, made from big That's horn it. fleece. Machine. Locks of hair were woven into the shirt that represented right all the brave deeds of the man. Right Every here. coup counted. Every scalp 